Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio. I'm your host, Deborah Bailey. And when I started this show in 2008, I was on a mission to promote women-owned businesses and help women succeed by providing resources and valuable tips from other women and men, small business owners. In each interview, my guests speak openly about their triumphs, the scary times, and tough decisions they had to make along the way. Women Entrepreneurs Radio is about showing women how to harness their natural strengths to achieve success on their own terms. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Bailey, and I am so glad to have you join us today. And if you're listening to the show on Podomatic, um, you can also come to dbcoach.podomatic.com, but also you can search for Women Entrepreneurs Radio on iTunes. So um, it's also on many other platforms, but particularly iTunes, you can go to and subscribe to the show. You can hear all the episodes. And actually, I would love if you would give a review uh, when you're on there and um, hopefully you give us five stars and definitely uh, let us know how you've enjoyed the show. Um, it always helps to have reviews on the show because of how algorithms are done you know that's that's the uh thing these days so uh the more reviews the more likely other listeners will also find the show so uh your feedback is very important and i really thank you for sharing that and if you're someone who's interested on being a guest uh you can come to womenentrepreneursecrets.com and there you'll find out more about the show and more about being a guest, and also the blog accepts guest posts. So that's something else you can find out there as well, how you could submit a post to the blog uh, to share that with the reader. So I hope that you will visit there. And also um, my website is dbailycoach.com. You can find out more about me and my books and um, online classes and things that I am doing as well. So I really hope that you will uh, visit my site and find out more about what um, what other things that I do. So we are going to get started with uh, my guest today, and it's Payal Nanjani. Nanjani, I make sure I got that right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I always check with my guests before uh, before I uh, pronounce names and make sure that I am. Um, Introducing them correctly, so they're usually very patient with me, and I really appreciate it. But she's a CEO at Insightful Learning and founder of the globally known Leadership Through Mind program. And she's a leadership trainer, business coach, and motivational speaker. And her clients range from small to medium business to Fortune 500 companies. And she's also author of an upcoming book to be published um, in the USA uh, in 2018. So, um, you know, we're definitely going to be hearing more about that as well. So there's definitely more to her story, but I'm going to let her tell us about it. So welcome to the show, Payal. I'm really glad to have you here. Thank you so much, Deborah. It is so nice and such a pleasure to be here on your show today. I'm really, really appreciated. And, you know, we were talking uh, before we got started uh, about the topic and everyone is going to be unstoppable success, how to achieve and thrive given any economy. And that's going to be a wonderful mm-hmm. discussion. Uh, before, But before we dive into that, I would really like you to share with us, Bile, just a little bit about how you got started with your business. And it- sure, Deborah. And what you said is so right that it is a journey and, you know, everybody has their own journey when they have to think about business or when they have to think about their professional life and where they would really want to want it to go. So, you know, in my case, uh, I still remember, you know, when it was 18 years back, I was promoted to the role of uh, of an HR manager. And this was my very first leadership role ever. 
and uh, you know i was really excited i wanted to succeed in what i do so you know in those days uh, you know i was this was back in the 90s or something and in those days there wasn't much of the internet boom so i started to read books on success and you know i wanted to see how i can really make this role of mine successful so every book that i read it started to you know shout out tips on success like time management goal setting positive thinking uh, like the you know, knowledge building and i was really confused because when i looked around i saw that most of the people around uh, you know around me were actually doing these things and then yet they weren't as successful as they really wanted it you know they it, it wasn't like oh wow you know after doing so much of research and reading and and i know i'm practicing and applying it they were at the pinnacle of success no it really wasn't like that so that prompted me to go deeper on the subject of success and i was so shocked on what i discovered debra mm-hmm. you know uh, statistics showed me that only 8% of the total world's population achieved their desired goals mm. wow. yeah and and isn't that shocking i mean and and from that only few are women Mm. Okay, so 8% of the people are successful out of which only uh, you know only a few bare minimum are women and that really made me stare at the number that day and i still remember thinking okay so 93% of those people who aren't in the success bracket are still doing hard work enhancing their skills and rolling in certification you know practicing the law of belief and attraction that we hear nowadays in you know doing all the mindfulness and still aren't getting to where they want to be so mm-hmm. that actually came as a warning sign to me that there is something significant missing in our professional life you know whether we are business owners or we are just working in a company uh, you know and all that knowledge out there today on habits of successful people and what you must do to you know climb the success ladder it hasn't yet shifted that number you know mm-hmm. today also you will see those those numbers are still the same mhm wow so that is something that you know that urged me to do something about it and then then you know i you know i was working like i said i was as an hr manager so what i started doing was you know i i started to observe closely and i saw that the company in which i work and the companies in which my friends and associates are in you know as individuals we all were receiving technical uh, and soft skills training you know on uh, on communication leadership on it everything and uh, these trainings were helping all of us you know to enhance our knowledge and expertise but it really missed out completely completely missed out the other side of success and leadership mm-hmm. and people started to you know i mean even even me i was achieving just a certain amount of success given any project or any target it wasn't like any lasting success or continuous and massive results you know mm-hmm. uh, you know still negativity persisted productivity remained a mystery to be solved you know the blame game continued there was lack of accountability lack of engagement and all those things continued uh, you know there was stress there was anxiety even that time and all this i noticed personally that it has an effect on the results mm. right so wow. so to try to see if you know we could change the results you know what i did was i designed a program and that time it wasn't the leadership through mind program i just designed a very small uh, you know course and i started facilitating these sessions in small groups um, at my workplace and mm-hmm. uh, you know slowly the program received a long wait list at its commencement and then seeing the positive results you know i was soon invited to other departments at my workplace and uh, what we noticed was that with every leadership through mind session that you know we were doing it started to inspire the teams and the leaders and productivity started to double mm-hmm. and uh, you know soon what happened was you know i started getting some calls from you know friends and associates who were business owners at that time 
and uh, you know they said what are you doing you know can you do this for us and i would just do it uh, you know out of fun at that point of time and soon when it started to spread and when it started to get to a point that i felt that this you know this really needs to be out there in the world it has to inspire business owners and people in their professional life that you know the numbers can change it doesn't have to be stuck at 8% you can achieve success with speed and serenity both so that's where i took a leap and uh, taking the leap of course wasn't easy and uh, you know it it went through a lot of rough phases a lot of terrains and a lot of plateaus and valleys and peaks and everything to get mm-hmm. to the point to where it is right now mm. wow <laughs> yeah so it's, it's been a journey like you said <laughs> <laughs> well it certainly sounds like one and um you know i think that's so interesting that people uh Well, often think that being successful in your field is just a straight line, and um, mm-hmm. none of the people who I've ever interviewed on this show has ever uh, agreed with that notion. <laughs> yeah, very right, you know, because it's it's just a continuous journey, and I think there is so much that goes into it. So you know, um, you know, any you know, all our listeners uh, who are into business, you know, I would really say that. you know you it's it's nice to have uh, you know you you look upon others and you know six success does leave clues and people are leaving clues of what has worked and what hasn't worked for them but ultimately you know uh, it's all about really knowing what you can do best for the you know for the others what service can you provide what product can you provide and and how would you like to take your journey ahead mm that's so true i'm i'm so glad that you you said that because that that is really uh the key to it and you know we we are talking about um success and and achieving um and thriving and i understand that you have three tips on how um how people can achieve unstoppable success Yes, Deborah. It, you know, I would love to share this with our listeners. Uh, you know, in the in the little time that we have today, uh, you know, leadership through mind started to become an alternate way to success, where people started to get their results, like I said, with speed and serenity. Mm-hmm. You know, they started to train themselves to think, speak, and act in new and you know different ways. so that they can reach their maximum potential so for any business owners reaching that maximum potential first within themselves is more important and and the outer results will soon follow mm. you know that's the entire uh, you know entire belief that i have always held so if i was to share you know three rituals that i would really um uh, you know ha- have my listeners practice or any of my clients practice you know the you know the first one would be to design your future daily mm mm-hmm. uh, you know and and this i would say it very heavily even for the women you know i i know i coach many uh, business women and men together and let me share this that almost 90% of them they overlook this aspect completely Mm-hmm. and uh, you know when i ask the women and i say that you know uh, the women business owners and i say that you know why why do you say that you miss out on this aspect they said oh you know where do i have the time for myself so uh, you know i'm not going to get deep into the self uh, today but just generally you know we talk about planning we talk about business plans we talk about marketing plans and we design you know all this for the next 6 months one year in fact i have met business owners who would come to me and say look you know this is my five year plan and i said okay so you know have you designed your future for today and they are like no 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 this is my five year plan you know while this is what i want to see myself five years from now but have you designed what you want to see yourself today Mm-hmm. right because mm-hmm. you know uh, you know your future is all dependent on what you do today it isn't dependent on what you were yesterday i i i may have been uh, having 10 clients today but do i have 11th one today so everything depends on not yesterday or on tomorrow but mainly on what you want to plan to become today and when i say that you know i say it with the aim that uh, you know it requires a daily audit of where you are now and where you want to go 
and mm. uh, you know it, it it's something that i work with my clients very closely on this aspect before moving ahead with their coaching so that you know they can become more successful beyond measures but uh, you know if you get this part right everything becomes easy it's like an eight step process that i speak about but you know to start with if you just know where you are exactly and very clearly not just like you know okay you know i, I today i have uh, 10 clients okay where you want to go very clearly very precisely what are your obstacles you know your action plans so if that is framed out and it's something that you're going to do daily it's not like i made it and it's on my wall and and that's it so you know that is something i would really urge our listeners is to map out the steps to achieving your goals every single day because without this step even the best of the resources time money that you have will never get you there and mm-hmm. even if it does get you there i shouldn't say never but even if it does get you there it's going to be very sporadic you know it's not going to be continuous and a lasting results that you are looking for mhm wow That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, because man of because very few of us really sit down daily and we do this all the time. Especially if it's an eight step process, you know. So it's like, okay, you know, do I do this? But mm-hmm. yeah, but you know, and then, you know, and then if you're moving on to the uh, to the second one, I would say start, you know, just start conditioning yourself to success. Mhm. Mm-hmm. so this is mainly you know um, uh, uh, my job gives me so much of uh, opportunities to interact with ceos and people who have you know made it big in their industry and one thing common amongst all these people that i have observed since so many years is that they really condition themselves to success and to make sure that the productivity doubles because um, you know let me give you this uh, it just reminds me while i'm talking to you debra about this uh, you know business owner who i was coaching mm-hmm. and um, you know and she worked relentlessly towards fulfilling her dream of starting her own clothing boutique and uh, you know business was moving ahead fine you know she had managed to grow however when she had contacted me it was the 6th year of her business and during that year it is a pre assumption that your business should have stable and it should be now moving towards a growth pattern mm-hmm. but eventually hers was failing miserably at that point you know and and you know just to cut the long story short what had happened was that all the hard work that she had been putting in was in the direction of only getting the results so she kept moving forward but she had never stepped back to condition herself for success which mm. means you know she had never conditioned herself for failure and she had never known how do you navigate the path of success the otherwise what will happen is success will fall in your lap whenever it wants to mm. and and you don't want that you want that instead of pursuing success success should come behind you you mm-hmm. should be the one moving ahead and success should be your you know it should be a faithful follower not like a sporadic one that okay you know today i decided i didn't have anyone else so i just came to you and i visited you mm-hmm. so you know if you want to really navigate the path of success you want constant success there are ways of conditioning yourself and when i say ways of conditioning i don't mean ways of just looking at okay you know what do successful people do no that is their journey that is something that they had you know at their time those resources they have used that is not conditioning yourself to success it is it is all about generating that success from within so that wherever you go it follows you you know so you take those steps and start to condition yourself mm I like that idea um of it uh not just falling in your lap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, because um, uh, I'm you know you you interview so many business owners. I'm sure you've heard so many stories where you know businesses start and businesses grow and businesses fail. Yes. And you know I always tell people I said it is never ever a death of a business. It is the death of a person from the mind, not physically. If your mind has you know adopted to certain patterns, your business is going to follow that pattern. So if your business is thriving, it is because you are thriving. If your business is dead, it's because you are dead internally. Something is going you know haywire internally. So mm, wow, that's a great thing to, to point out as well. Very important. Yeah, yes, true. Yes. And, yeah. 
and, and, and you know, um, and I, and the, 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 the last, the third ritual I would say is uh, to increase your value every single day. Mm. Uh, and, and this again comes, this again comes very strongly for we women. Uh, you know, it reminds me uh, of a story of this man, you know, who was just walking on the road and he, you know, eventually stumbles on a small piece, you know, on a small ring. And he picks it up, he doesn't understand what it is, and so he just goes to a nearby shopkeeper and he asks the shopkeeper, he says, you know, hey, do you know what this is? And he says, oh, this just looks like a simple ring. He said, oh, you know, if I sell it, you know, what will you give me for it? And he says, maybe around $50. He said, oh, okay, but he doesn't sell it there. He just goes to another shop and that shop apparently happens to be, uh, you know, of a merchant and of a king, a king merchant. And, and he says, oh, this looks like, uh, you know, something very, uh, very valuable. And I would give you at least $500 for it. He said, oh, you know, from one shop to another, the value has increased. And finally, he goes to the jeweler's shop and the jeweler says, you know, from where did you bring this? He said, oh, it was just lying on the road and someone said the worth is $50 or $500. He said, oh man, are you crazy? He said, this is worth thousands and thousands of dollars. It is pure, pure gold. From where did you get this? He said, thousand and thousand of dollars. <laughs> so he decided to keep the ring with him. You know, he said, no, I'm not going to sell this. You know, nobody's giving me the real value of it. But what I'm trying to, you know, bring across here is that every person is going to put the value on you depending on how they see it, you know, what's their perspective about you. And that will change that value every time. So, you know, someone may say that your product, your service, you know, it doesn't look more like a value of $100. And someone may say, wow, it's a value of $1,000. So, you know, it's up to us on how you know, to know the value and to increase that value daily, not to depend on people, you know, like so many women, I have met uh, in the business, they, they, they under-negotiate their business deals or they under-negotiate their corporate salaries. So, uh, you know, through my coaching and, you know, seminars, I always tell them, I said, know your value first. You know, you just do your homework, know your value first and make sure that every single day, whether you have a client or not, whether you are good, doing good in business or not, make sure you take some time out to increase your value every day and then know it, you know, don't depend on someone else because there are so many changes in the business world today. And, and, you know, the future is, you know, so much changes in the technology, in, uh, in technology, in the, in the artificial intelligence, we're moving ahead to something unknown in that mm -hmm. unknown zone. If your value is also unknown, it's, it's very risky in business. Mm. That's interesting. <laughs> well, <laughs> not to scare anyone, not to scare anyone. I'm not too sure, but you know, let's be prepared. Let's not, you know, blind ourselves and say, oh, you know, everything is going to be fine. Because if we are prepared, you know, everything else around us will fall in place. Mm, that's very interesting. Um, and I think a lot of times people. Um, and I, I guess I really should ask you this because, you, as you must know, a lot of people out here are hearing a lot of different things about business building from people a lot of times who aren't really giving them the whole story. <laughs> um, you know, they're not really going to the details that you have shared with us and they don't maybe not know what's really involved. You know, what is really involved and what they have to commit to. Um, you know, have you come across that kind of, um, I guess, individual who really doesn't know what they're really laying themselves in for. <laughs> yes, yes, very much. Because I, I agree to that, Deborah. Because, you know, they start out with something in the mind. And then it really, you know, when the rubber hits the road, it is something different altogether. Mm -hmm. mm. So, so yes, you know, they, 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 they don't they don't know exactly where they are going. And that's why, you know, like I said, the first step of designing that future daily is very important. You know, people, people design, uh, you know, something for the next one year, but then again, the business starts going, you know, very, uh, it's not going straight. It's, it's having a zigzag pattern. And that zigzag pattern is not because of the economy or, or your clients or the people around you. It's because internally something is going that manner. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So knowing, you know, knowing yourself, knowing exactly where you want to go, it, it is time consuming. And, you know, most of the books, if, you know, if, if, you know, to our listeners also that, you know, when, who are reading on, uh, you know, they read books on business, they read books on leadership. Most of the books on leadership or, or business will give you the technical knowledge of what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to make a business plan, how you are supposed to market your business. But, you know, if, you know, if you're, if you're very well versed with even all those techniques and your business isn't where it should be going, it's because there is a gap between, between the implementation and, and the idea. And that is what, you know, through, with leadership through mind, we are trying to fill in that, you know, business is not about just the technical skill set. It is a whole lot. Actually, science has proved it now that 80% of your success today in business is because of your psychology, your physiology, your biochemistry, everything that is, you know, apart from just the skill set. So it really has to go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. I, I don't feel that enough people um, are told that. You know, um, yeah, I don't think enough people are told that um, uh, because in particular with a lot of people going into business, um, you know, particularly people who may be coming out of corporate or people who haven't gone really into the corporate world at all um, or those for whatever reason decide, you know, okay, I'm going to start this thing. And I think a lot of the advice given them is more about, well, do your website, do this, do 10 things. Um, yeah. But not about having the leadership, you know, is what, you know, you are, are uh, specialized in and in, in looking inside of yourself as who you are, what you believe, how you conduct yourself in your life. And as we're saying, that's going to be reflected mm -hmm. outwardly in your business yeah yeah you know? very right and uh, and i completely agree to what you said that it's not uh, they are not given this message very often and uh, that is the reason you know um, even my youtube channel we are giving that message to the form in the form of these short bite-sized trainings for business owners and for corporate you know leaders and women in different areas of their work so through those videos, they are getting that message and they're getting the steps because not everyone is able to attend my live seminars and nor am I associated with every business owner, you know, who I can serve. But, uh, but these, these videos are like free learning resources for anyone who would really want to make sure that they move not to the next or the next, but to the highest level that they can. Mm. That's very interesting, you know, because particularly, you know, since this show is about women entrepreneurs and that's really my focus. And it seems mm -hmm. to me that a lot of times women don't, I can't say that we don't always look at these heights that we could go to, but maybe we're mm -hmm. just not sure that that's something we can do. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, that's very right. It's the undervalue. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And that's, that's yeah. what you've been saying. Yeah. And, and, you know, most of the people, most of the women, uh, they feel that, okay, you know, let me take my business to the next level. No, let me take my business to the highest level that I can. And automatically it will go to the next and the next and the next. You don't have to think of the next level. You have to think of the highest level that you can take it to. And uh, again, for that, knowing your value and increasing your value is so imperative. Yeah, I agree. And I think that that's often what the the part that we don't always we aren't able to do um not that we're not capable of because maybe in a lot of cases culturally uh women aren't really guided to think that way or taught to think that way or, or other people you're around don't encourage that <laughs> so. yeah. Yes, yes, it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, without getting too deep into that, uh, into that topic, but, um, uh, you know, I, I am from a generation that was being brought up during the, you know, the, during the early 80s and 90s, where, where women weren't into the work field too much. And I remember my very first job, uh, you know, as an HR manager when I was moving up was in a completely, completely male-dominated industry of, uh, of hotels. 
of being an HR manager and managing, you know, all the men. So, and at that time, women weren't much in the in the workforce as we see them today. So, you know, uh, my my aim has always been and still is that the more the women are able to realize that, you know, we aren't really here to equate with anyone. We are not here to equate ourselves with men or anyone. We are born different and we are going to do different stuff around. So with that difference in mind, how do I use leadership through mind? How do I make that difference? How do I differentiate myself from others? And I think a lot of times that's um, a problem for, for business owners to say, how do I differentiate myself? How, what do I bring to the table that's not yeah. the same as everyone else? Yes, yes. You know, like we are not here to equate ourselves with men and show that, you know, we are you know, very equal to what you do. No, we are born different and we will do something different mm -hmm. to stand out. You know, mm -hmm. we are going to do something same and show that we are shoulder to shoulder with, you know, we're going to do something different that shows we are the women of today and we can do things which maybe you may have not even thought of. <laughs> I <laughs> <Yeah>. love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wonderful way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we buy the sleep of the entire energy trying to equate with someone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. You know, you, you look at what you bring to the table, what your advantages are, and use those as, oppo as opposed to trying to be someone else or, or compare yourself to them. Um, well, I have yeah. to be like this, you know, I, I saw that a lot in, um, in, in corporate where, um, yeah. you know, a lot of times people are trying to equate themselves to other, uh, management styles that maybe is not really the right way to go. And, and maybe they really needed to step up in their own way and, um, be a stronger manager, uh, than to try to fit into, um, you know, what other people were doing that may have been more natural for them, you know? So there's, there's a lot of layers Absolutely. to this. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, that's, that's, that's right. Yep. Yep. So, you know, I'm just hoping that the women will step to the highest level that they can. <laughs> yes. Yes. I agree. I agree. I think that's important. And, you know, for, for them to understand that they, they can do that. It's not a bad thing, you know? <laughs> <It's> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It isn't. I agree. <laughs> right, right. It's not a bad thing to want that. To 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 work yeah. towards that is not a negative. But you know, could you please share where people can find you online? Sure, Deborah. So, um, you know, my website is um, it's ltmprogram.com, uh, ltmprogram.com, or they can simply type my name, payalnanjiani.com. It will lead them to the same website. Uh, for any free resources for business owners and for corporate leaders, you know, if they want free resources, they can follow us or connect with me on my Facebook. Uh, again, they can simply type on the Facebook file Nanjiani and they will be connected or they can type my company's name insightful.learning. And, um, you know, they can find us on LinkedIn again by just typing Payal Nanjiani on the LinkedIn. There are weekly snippets that go out for business owners to let them know how they can, you know, differentiate themselves in today's market and go beyond skill sets and, you know, try and, uh, you know, go to the highest level of their uh, success. Uh, those snippets can be subscribed from our website. It's, uh, uh, it's again, payalnanjani.com stroke subscribe. And lots of free videos. It's like a learning university that we have set up on our YouTube channel. Uh, you know, simply just type Payal Nanjani on YouTube. You should be able to see the channel. Feel free to subscribe to it and take your success to the next level. Wonderful. That's great. And, um, you know, when your book comes out, are you going to put that also on your website or, or are you planning maybe to have a different website for that? Sure. Uh, it will be on the website. There will be a different link for it. And, uh, you know, I hope you and me can connect and we can, you know, help the uh, listeners to know more about the book. Oh, yes. I think that would be fantastic because I, I think that people should uh, read about what you did say and, and really learn more about what they have. They can apply this 
to their particular work. So, you know, you travel, you know, we were talking about before how you travel a lot, you do a lot of different things. I wonder, sometimes uh, women feel that they have to find some way to balance everything in their lives and, and all of this, you know, do you have any thoughts about balance? Because some people say it's impossible. Yes, I agree. Uh, you know, and I think, uh, I don't think it's impossible. It's just that I, you know, I feel that women cannot have it all. In fact, even men cannot have it all. Nobody mm -hmm. can have it all. Everybody has something that they have to give if they are wanting. So, you know, if, if you're in the East, you have to leave West. And if you want to go to the West, you have to leave East. So none who are, you know, nobody who is on this earth can actually have it all. So in the balance that we women try to create, and I had this issue a lot when I was, uh, I was setting up my business in those days and, uh, you know, a couple of years back. And it was, it was a balance that I had to choose between, you know, it really wasn't a balanced balance, but it was just a matter of choice. You know, do I choose to visit my daughter, uh, you know, every single day for lunch or do I choose, okay, you know, to make a schedule for that and then try and see how I can, uh, I can continue with my work. And, and the same is, you know, with, 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 the, with the moms, with the dads, with anyone that, you know, you have to take care of so many things around you. So what are the things you decide to choose, you know, to hold on to? And what are some of the things you think can either be dropped off? They are not really necessary. Maybe you're just carrying a baggage because you're used to carrying that baggage and it's high time to put it down. But, you know, you're just so, you know, fine tuned to carry it that you feel uncomfortable putting it down. So, you know, put the baggage down, which you really feel isn't really necessary anymore. And, uh, you know, hold on to new things, you know, carry with those things that are helping you move ahead, not things that are pulling you back just because it was a part of your life when your business wasn't uh, a part of your life. That's a good uh, so I think it's about the baggage that you want to leave. And, 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 and add on some new clothes, you know, it's like shopping, you know, you, you don't keep wearing the same clothes every day. It's just like, okay, you know, I decided to just donate these now and I have to pick some new ones. So donate, donate those baggages that you don't want with you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> don't keep carrying them around with you, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just going to make you heavy. It's going to slow you down and your highest point of success is going to look really far. <laughs> That's a good. That's a good way to 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 say it because that gives you something you can really picture and understand. <laughs> that's excellent. That's excellent. So it it really sounds as though there are strategies that people can follow and put into practice to really help them to go to the heights that they can dream of. Yes, they can because you know whatever you are looking for, and this is how. This is something I would just sum it up with, uh, you know, something from the heart that whatever you are looking for is really looking for you too. So, so be ready. I think that's a great, a great way to, to put it uh, because a lot of times, well, I guess you could say all the time, it's things that you are drawn to, that you're really drawn to, that you enjoy doing, can do, people ask you if you could do. Those are the things that that's telling you. Those are the things that you can contribute and the ways you can serve and however you define it. That's really what you are about. You know, that's what you should be expressing um, in the world. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of times people get short changed in that or I should say turned around uh, because they may be, oh, that's people tell you, oh, that's not going to make money. Go do this, you know, or, or mm -hmm. oh, that, this, mm -hmm. this isn't good because someone told me I should do that. You know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. We just listen to what people are saying. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, you're all over the map, and then people wonder why they don't have the success that they are dreaming of, uh, because they're not they're not fully invested. Their heart isn't in it. That's not where their aptitude is. You know, there's a variety of reasons, but um, mm -hmm. I think what you said makes perfect sense, and it really puts it into a way that is really easily understood for <laughs> folks out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for everybody listening you know it's not it's it's something you can really understand and see what what you need but you know we could really this is really such a good conversation i know we could go on and on <laughs> to talk about yeah, this. Sure. <laughs> 
because there's a lot of a lot of aspects to it. I know that, um, as I said, you you'll be uh, uh, returning to talk more about your book. But you know, for now, um, do you have any final thoughts about um, you know about the conversation? Yeah, I think you know, um, just putting it together, Deborah. You know, something which I feel that you know, when I was just looking at your website and your radio, I would just like to say that this is such a good resource that you have created for uh, for the women and for business owners. But I think, you know, just for them to, you know, listen to everything, to take their experience through you and through this channel of yours is, is really super, really super. So thank you so much for that, you know, at, at the first place, for creating something so wonderful for everyone, a platform like this. And, um, you know, to all our listeners, you know, what I would say is that, you know, the, you know, the flight of your career is still to take off and you know you still have a long way to go so you know you just conquered a little bit of the earth and the entire entire sky is still to be conquered so so keep moving ahead you know just keep moving ahead don't you know look left right just be like the horse you know with the blinders and keep moving ahead and learn you know just practice to design your future daily to condition yourself for success and to increase your value daily at least to start off with Perfectly said. Thank you um, for saying it that way. And also thank you, um, you know, for mentioning as far as the show and, and everything. You know, I've, I've mentioned before that I started a podcast uh, actually 10 years ago back when it was being called Internet Radio <laughs> before, oh. before, before we had a nice cute podcast name for for. Uh, these types of things and um, I did it because I wanted to meet other entrepreneurs that was really why I started it you know I had wanted to meet other people doing these things because a lot of the people I knew weren't doing them and um, I hadn't really been in touch with a lot of people um, just face to face who were doing business or starting their own business so I was like there's got to be people out there and obviously there are because I I'm still here 10 years later (laughs) exactly 10 years is like oh wow you know keep going and getting it done so you are an inspiration on your own (laughs) (laughs) well thank you for that you know I never thought I would be uh I would still be having these conversations. I thought it would just be a few months and then that would be the end of it. But it, um, I know. yeah, you know, when I started, it was just kind of when the uh, financial meltdown happened. And then in that, there was a big shift in what people were looking for and what they want to do. And entrepreneurship started to be heard more and more. Um, so I think that had a lot to do with it too. It was, it was the timing of uh-huh. it. But I, I think it's very important to have these conversations, and that's why I'm, I'm really um, glad that I can continue to have them and just kind of let people know different aspects of business that they may be going into that they may not realize that they should be considering and, and different ways to do it and different, as you're saying, looking within and really doing that work and really looking up as to where you want to go and not limiting yourself and not feeling that you can't do this or you have to do that. Just really looking at Mm -hmm. it from what I want to achieve and how I can get there and how I can do the inner work as well to um, move into those levels. And I think those are important things to say right now because I don't think they're getting said enough to the average business owner. You know, I think a lot of the high achieving people, very successful people hear these messages but I think the people just starting out, a lot of times don't hear these messages. They just hear you just these steps and then you'll be rich tomorrow. They don't. <laughs> they yeah. don't. <laughs> exactly. Shortcut. You know, though though LTM is an alternate way to success, it is not a shortcut. It just tells you yes. of how you do it with speed and serenity. So what you're saying is right. There is nothing like you know. Okay, you will become a millionaire tomorrow. And uh, even the book is talking more about what are some of the ways that you can manifest your results the way you want them to and, and how to do that. Yes. And I think that's that's a wonderful way um, for you to put it out there. Um, that's like I said, those messages are things I think that need to get out there more to people who may not be at those mm-hmm. levels that they uh, may be able to invest those kinds of, you know, that kind of money or they may not be in those circles that they hear these things. But right. I'm hoping that by having these conversations with different business people that they can hear these things and realize that, yes, you can be one of those business people yourself. Just 
just as far as aiming higher and understanding that there's work involved in getting there, but it can be done. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm really happy to have you here, and we'll be very happy to have you return to, to, to share your book with us and, and talk more about that. I think, you know, that's something that I'm definitely looking forward to and looking forward to having you return. Thank you so much, Deborah, and thank you for creating such a great platform for everyone. It was a pleasure wow. to talk to you. <laughs> My pleasure, definitely. Um, so, everyone, I know you enjoyed the show. A uh, lot to learn here. Uh, you can sh please share this with other people that you know, other business people, other business people to be, and visit Payal's site and check out what she's doing online. And also, you know, you'll find out when her um, next show will be, uh, when her book is out. You can definitely be follow the show, subscribe, and all that. You'll definitely find out when, when that show is posted as well. And you can learn more about, um, you know, the strategies she'll be sharing with us in her book. Again, to Women Entrepreneurs Radio with your host, Deborah Benelli. I'm so glad you could join me today, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. You can also join in the conversation on Facebook.com slash Women Entrepreneurs and on the website, WomenEntrepreneurSecrets.com. And don't forget to listen in on DVCoach.Podomatic.com and on iTunes.